In my opinion, full immersion is the best protocol for education to get a sense of the, the taste, the smell, the culture, the energy, the vibe. You know, you have to feel there's texture, there's richness in going to a place where somebody comes from and that directly affects the culinary experience. The food that we eat, if it's not grown in your backyard or locally, it's grown across the planet. On a day-to-day -day basis or a meal-to-meal -meal basis, as people, we are already eating globally. So we should understand where these ingredients come from. I think that these things can be overlooked by the diner, but we want to get as close to the ingredients as possible and travel allows that because you end up having a new found respect for the things that we eat and the industries that they come from from day to day. I was living on Bleak and LaGuardia, a fruit stand across the street from my house. The owner, Mustafa, was probably the most charismatic, funny person. He would turn me on to Turkish culture daily. This was my daily stop on the way to work, on the way from work, pick my vegetables up. And him and I formed a really cool friendship. A lot of drinks, um, but he would get ingredients delivered from Turkey, jugs of olive oil, fresh vacuum packed bags of olives and fresh cheeses. And he took great pride in not only having an identity and having a oat of like patriotism for his country, but also the things that his country provides and the day-to-day -day lifestyle that they practice in terms of health and wellness. So I always knew that Turkey was gonna be a destination that I visited. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, um, but the opportunity came up and I booked the trip. First airport meal, headed out to Istanbul. Yeah, let's see how this trip goes. It's been quite some time since I've seen my dear friend Mustafa, but when the opportunity came for me to go to Istanbul, just based on my experiences with him and a few others, I always wanted to visit, so I jumped on it. After a long sleepless flight, I grab my bags and some lira, take a bus over to Taksim, and meet up with my good buddy, Remzi. Remzi is a local entrepreneur and businessman and all around mover and shaker, and he knows Istanbul like the back of his hand and is always down for an adventure. Istanbul reminds me of any other city, the hustle, the bustle, even down to the public transportation, just like New York, only cleaner. Public transportation is one of the best ways to get around any city, especially when it's fast, efficient and clean, which most subway systems seem to maintain. Istanbul originally named Constantinople after the Emperor Constantine when he moved to the capital from Rome, is split between Europe and Asia. The Roman Empire held on to the power until 1453, when the Ottoman Empire came and took over, led by Sultan Mehmet. The religion predominantly practices Islam and is ever present in the best way. The Sultan, being an advocate for trade, built the Great Grand Bazaar, which exists to this day and is the main hub for all things being sold in Istanbul. Grand Bazaar, Istanbul. There are textiles, lighting, metal, spices. We need. You just check. A whole roll of something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I got then you. you can always find your delicious swarmers, grilled meats, salads, soups, rich in texture and flavor. And being that Istanbul is right off the Bosphorus in between the Black Sea, they have the freshest catch when it comes down to seafood. Amazing stuff. Which way? Spices, unless you want to see more material. Saffron is one of those spices that I've tried years ago and when I found it, it opened up this whole world for me and I was determined to find out where it came from and what makes it so precious. And come to find out, saffron is the stamen of a 
crocus flower. And this flower or this particular part of the flower has to be picked by hand and it only grows overseas. So when you see this little one gram jar of saffron, realizing that that could have came from Iran, Persia, Morocco, to wherever it is to where you are now is what, yeah, what, what's mind blowing to me. So I've set out and, and I stop at no end to try to get this, this spice and as much of it as I can because I continue wanting to enjoy it and yeah, want to spread the gospel of saffron or just let people know about it. Something truly special. The Varesh Spice Shop is centered in the middle of the Spice Bazaar and is ran by Mehmet. And the first class saffron. Mehmet reminds me so much of Mustafa in terms of his passion, love for his country, and knowledge of all things he sells and more. We remain friends to this day and he even checks out my live show when he can. Today Mehmet has plenty of Iranian saffron at the right price. I get some, we do a quick photo shoot and we're off to put some more work in. Good crew in Istanbul, putting in a little bit of work. Marcus Anthony's table, stay tuned. Seafood happens to be another love of mine, Istanbul being situated between the Sea of Marmara and the Black Sea is world renowned for its fresh catch. And the crew at Hazur Balik Chilik Kamkapa, forgive my pronunciation if I butchered it, are as warm, welcoming, patient, and excited to see you get the best that they have to offer. Yeah, I'm gonna buy it. You buy this one? Hey, Turkey Fishman Yasin. Original Fishman. <laughs> Istanbul, Turkey. Look at that. It's turbid. I take my fresh catch home. Get a nice olive oil delivery to my doorstep. Good looking out, Rem. With ingredients this fresh, no need to do the most. Season it. I could cook more fish. Put it in a pot with some onions, garlic, tomato, couple taters. Steam up a nice fish and food, a little salad. Oh, yeah. And I know I'm not gonna revisit this meal tomorrow, so I go hook up the local feline. Go ahead. Go eat. Cats are revered animals here. There are an ahead, estimated 150,000 of them living Holy on the streets shit. in Istanbul. Ahead, Sounds like a problem to be solved, right? Nope. There's a saying that if you kill a cat, you have to build a mosque in order to be forgiven by God. Tells you a little bit about the cat culture out here. I get it though. Every morning, this little dude would greet me at my doorstep, hang out with me, and watch my back until I left for the day. That was my little guy right there. There is a majestic aura here in Taxim, right down to the Spock spirit. This is Ottoman Empire, built in 1481. We don't see things like this anymore, even being in the construction industry. Everything's new. Everything's new or renovation. After the morning hammam, I'd spend the day discovering the city and its rich history. Walking through the back streets over the miles of cobblestone now traversed by automobiles and designer shoes are the very same streets that horses, chariots, and warriors and gladiator sandals were risking it all to execute a leader's vision for this land. It used to be a Byzantine Empire. Oh, yeah. The city. The city. Constantinople. Yeah. Whatever side of it you're on, in my opinion, there is a tenacity within people who have fought and endured but still remain humble and optimistic. And those people tend to set the overall tone of a place. My buddy Mustafa was right. Istanbul is awesome. Shut up, my friend. You can be across the globe and a city is a city. Um, there may be different languages, a few different customs, but the smells, the people, the energy, tax them is like that. Coming back home, I desire to bring the flavors with me and try to keep that energy that I felt from that place that I was in and bring it back home and make that last as long as possible. And the best way that I can do that is to make the food and the dishes and share them with my closest people to give them that experience as well. And that's what travel is all about. So yeah, I'm psyched to be back to NY and now we're in Brooklyn. And I know a butcher that we're gonna go get some amazing lamb from. Sourcing your protein from a quality place where you know you're gonna get quality ingredients is is paramount. So let's go check out the butcher in BK cooking globally today.
We got our lamb back. The first thing you're going to want to do is rinse it off. The lamb actually came in contact with the table at the butcher, with the saw. You can have pieces and fragments of bone in your lamb. So what you want to do is give it a thorough rinse when you get home. Out of the water, lay it on a wire rack because it allows the moisture to come out of the lamb, allowing room for the Maillard reaction to happen. The Maillard reaction is caramelization. We want caramelization when we brown our meat, so we want that layer of flavor locking into each piece of lamb while the delicious flavors marry on the outside. What I'm gonna do is season it first, dry brown. So each piece, heavy. We wanna build our flavors starting now. Give them a turn, mix them all up. In Morocco, they use a preserved butter called smen, very similar to ghee. So if you have ghee, use ghee. If you have smen, use smen. If you don't have either, use olive oil, all good. We're gonna put a few teaspoons of our smen. Let that come up to temperature. And from here, we're gonna brown our lamb. You could smell that smen or ghee. And we don't have to go too crazy with adding a lot of fat because that delicious fat from the lamb, that's going to melt down and add flavor and texture to your meal. So brown each piece and leave room in your pan when you're browning. Don't crowd it. When you crowd your pan, you're going to create steam, the enemy of caramelization, right? We want browning to happen, that Maillard reaction. Don't move it too much. Enjoy this process. We're gonna flip it in a second. Check. Nice and brown. In this pan right now, the flavors of that fresh brown lamb, that flavor from Marcus Anthony Table Dry Brown, right? Let's now incorporate some flavors into our lamb stew. Like all good stews, onion, whole, garlic cloves. When you're sauteing your vegetables, season them a little bit, add a little more dry brown. Add sliced ginger. Nice sweet of tomato paste. And add a healthy pinch of that Iranian saffron that we just bought back from Istanbul. Let's also add some Aleppo pepper powder that we also got from our good friend. Man, man. Add a little chicken stock and scrape. That will get flavor. Give it a taste. Delicious. Healthy pinch of one. It's a season up your stew. That's thyme, coriander, paprika, scotch bonnet, black pepper, onion powder, garlic. You see how that just turns that beautiful red color. So much flavor. Now, let's take our lamb back into our pan. All of your flavors. Another majestic and magical ingredient that I learned about in my travel overseas are preserved lemons. This I get from Morocco. So, as a way to preserve lemons and bring out the flavor, you take them and you pack them in salt, just like this. It's something that you can't quite explain. Something magical and delicious happens. The lemon actually preserves, the flavors get brought out. And what you're left with is this flavor bomb. 
almost an umami flavor, but it adds this element that you don't know where that flavor is coming from, what's going on, but it's so deep and it's so easy to make. Just salt and lemon. So what you do is you pack your lemons, pack them in salt, you leave them in a jar. Take out a piece, rinse it off. Not gonna be too salty. Give a chop. Turn. Give it ice. In. Only preserve lemon. Stir. Put your oven on 400. Get out that shop. Right in. Leave nothing. Now, before this goes into the oven, chicken stock. Cinnamon stick in, cover on. Beautiful. See how the lamb has broken down lamb fat. Beautiful tender pieces of meat. At this point, let's add some nice briny olives. We like that salty sweet. For the sweet factor, let's add some figs. Get that delicious lamb juice all over everything. Put your top on. Back in the oven for an hour. In the meantime, let's put together a nice salad. Quick and easy. Cucumber. Diced tomato. Onion. Skin from cucumber. Dressing. Olive oil. Lemon juice. Touch of salt. Mix. Some cilantro. And it's that simple. Bites of fresh to go with that unctuous fatty lamb. Yeah, it's about that time. Let's pull it out. Give it a nice shake. Get everything happy. I'm inviting you to come on this journey with me. If I could show you what my experiences were like going somewhere, doing something, traveling, cooking, eating, interacting, that might make it that much easier for you to go and do the same. Take a chance on food, take a chance on your life, your experience, the things that you're passionate about. And as we all are involved in this planet, we take care of it. We take our skill sets and we bring it back to the table. Break bread with each other, be kind, share, eat well. Wagwan!